Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I last uploaded a video, but I figured this one should be of interest to quite a lot of you because I've had quite a lot of comments about doing this one. So this video is going to be covering how to design a pad stone when you've got a beam spanning in plane of the wall. And this sort of situation when you're creating an opening in an existing wall happens all the time. So it's actually really, really important that you understand how to design a pad stone for this because sometimes the beam end reactions are really, really high and you do need to spread the load quite a lot so that you don't overstress the masonry below. This is actually overlooked quite a lot so it should be really important that you get this right and hopefully this video will explain to you how to do it. If you've got any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments below. So I want to go through this example using the British standards version and the steps are pretty much exactly the same for Eurocodes. The main differences is the way in which you calculated the resistance for the stresses and in the British standards it's way simpler than the Eurocode. It's really long winded in the Eurocode but as long as you follow the code it's not too bad. In this example I'm only considering the end reaction of a beam, I'm not considering any other loads above the wall or any floor load spanning onto it just to make things a lot simpler. So this steel beam is applying a end reaction of 50 kN and this is the factored end reaction. The wall thickness is going to be 140mm and we're going to be using blockwork masonry. From the tables within the code we're going to use a characteristic compressive strength FK of 6.4 newtons per millimeter squared. And the safety factor we're going to be applying is 3.5 for compression. So there are basically three steps which you'll need to follow. The first being to check the stress underneath the beam. And this check is going to determine whether or not you actually need a spreader or a pad stone. If the stress is low enough and you don't need a pad stone, that's basically your design done. If you have calculated that the stresses are too high and you need a pad stone or a spreader, then you move on to step two, which is to check the stress underneath or below the spreader. Once you've checked this and the stresses are okay, you will need to check the stress at 0.4 H from the top of the wall. The beam is going to be bearing onto the wall by 100 mil and it's also going to have a 140 mil wide flange. So to check the stress applied, it's quite simply the force divided by the bearing area. So that's 50 kN divided by 100 times 140. Then we need to check the resistance and in our case it's bearing type 2 from figure 5. That means we use the equation of 1.5 Fk over the safety factor. And that gives us a stress resistance of 2.74. Because this value is less than the applied stress, that means we need a spreader or a pad stone. So now moving on to step 2 and we actually need to calculate the maximum stress that this beam reaction is applying to the end of the pad stone or spreader. I think there are a number of ways in which you can work out the maximum stress. I think this is going to be the easiest way and it's going to be the same sort of method as you would do when you're checking distresses in a pad foundation. So what we want to be doing is to calculate the moment about the centroid of the spreader or the pad stone. And what you need to remember is that the beam bearing is 100mm so we need to take the eccentric length from the idealized beam end reaction so it's 50 mil inset from the edge of the pad stone once you've worked out this length now you can take moments about the center of the pad stone and this gives us a moment of 8.5 kN meters so now we're going to be using these simple stress equations and if you haven't seen this already i suggest you go check out my foundation design video as i explain it there as well so all you do is plug the numbers into the equation to get your maximum stress I'm not really interested in the minimum stress so all I'm going to do is add these values together. So we get a maximum stress of 2.69 newtons per millimetre squared. Because this is now a bearing type 3 because we're using a spreader, to calculate the resistance we're now using 2 times Fk over material safety factor and this gives us a resistance of 3.65 which is greater than our applied stress, therefore it's okay. So now for the third and final step and that's to check the stress at roughly mid height of the wall or 0.4 H. So what we want to work out is the length of wall which is affected by the beam reaction. And this length is denoted as LEFM. 
This value is really easy to work out and it's just using trigonometry based on a 45 degree spread. The one thing you need to remember is that it's calculated from the end of the beam bearing. So just make sure when you're calculating our EFM that you add on the beam bearing as well. We also want to consider the self weight of the wall. So we need to work out the force or the stress from the self weight of the wall. So if we assume that the block work density is 18 kN per meter cubed, we can then work out the stress which is being applied from the self weight of the wall above that point. And this stress is really, really small and it works out as 0.017. We then need to add on the beam reaction stress spread over that area. And that's simply the beam reaction divided by LEFM times by the thickness. So then we get a combined stress of 0.36 newtons per millimeter squared. So the stress resistance is calculated by multiplying beta by FK over material safety factor. Beta is a reduction factor and it's based on the ratio of the effective height divided by the effective thickness. So all you need to do is work out that ratio, go to table seven in the code, and then find your reduction factor. In our case, the reduction factor beta comes to 0.8. So then all we need to do is plug it into the formula for calculating the stress resistance, and we get a stress resistance of 1.46 newtons per millimeter squared, which is greater than the applied 0.36. Therefore, our design is fine. Now I'm going to show you what you can do if the reaction force is really, really high. So why don't we try a beam end reaction of 100 kilonewtons. So we know that a spreader is definitely going to be needed because if 50 kilonewton needs a spreader, then 100 kilonewton obviously needs a spreader. So what we can do is use a longer spreader beam. And in reality, this could be a precast concrete lintel. And what we can also do is increase the beam bearing length. So before it was 100 millimeters what we're going to do now is increase it to 200 millimeters and we're also going to be using a 800 mil long spreader the reason that we want to increase the beam bearing length is quite simply so that the end reaction is closer to the centroid of the spreader and this basically just reduces the bending moment and therefore reducing the stress so we're basically going to jump straight to step two from before and just plugging in the numbers into the equations that we used before So with these new values, we get a bending moment of 30 kilonewton meters, and then we can work out the stress in exactly the same way as before, and we get a maximum stress of 2.89 newtons per millimeter squared. The stress resistance is exactly the same as the previous example, so therefore we just need to check that the allowable stress is greater than our stress applied, in this case it is. Therefore, our design works for this loading. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. It seems to be quite a highly requested video, so I'm really hoping that it's gonna answer a lot of questions. I mentioned earlier that the Eurocode method is pretty much exactly the same. The only major difference is calculating the resistance, which takes a hell of a lot longer. If you've got any questions about the Eurocode method, just drop me a comment, or if you'd prefer for me to do a video on it, also leave me a comment. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, smash that like button and I'll catch you on our next video. Cheers.